All right, our next guest plans to watch the retailers very carefully. Tony Dwyer is a chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity. Tony, great to have you with us. Great to be with um, you, Mel. What, what are you going to look for signs of? It sounds like the consumer continues to spend. Well, because they have credit available via yeah. credit cards, but as Timmy said, that's hitting a new level. So, I, you know, at, at some point, you're going to deplete your cash and the money supply data, the movement of money out of deposits into money market funds. Uh, and the use of credit cards is going to hit a level that's going to be unsustainable. I, th I think we're pretty close to it, Mel. So are there particular uh, retailers, Tony, that you think will give you the best read in terms of the economy? It's the more defensive ones. And, and I, mm -hmm. I totally get, you know, I'm typically the bull up until the last 15 months. But, you know, I went back and I looked because you're getting such outperformance in the defensive sectors that it made me think, well, maybe it's already priced in. But when you go back and look at pre-recession periods before, they're usually outperforming going into a recession and then outperform in the beginning of it and then reverse hard once you hit that low. And that's really so, uh, Mel, that's our game plan is to stay light uh, in exposure and a little bit more defensive without getting too negative because it's when bad news becomes bad news is that final leg lower that you typically get. Tony, it's Tim. Great having you. Where are we in this EPS downgrade cycle that we've talked about? I mean, we, we, we're, we're, we're in that earnings recession, if you're, again, technically going by recession numbers. And, and I, I guess I just, you know, I just can, am concerned that companies aren't worth what they were yesterday in a rising rate environment, not only for the math that you do here, but because of that EPS. Well, good to see you, Timmy. Uh, according to my earnings wizard at Refinitiv, yes, I have an earnings wizard at Refinitiv. When you look at the operating earnings margin, it doesn't drop because of cost. So, you know, everybody goes into the earnings season thinking, okay, costs are going to be up. It's going to pressure profit margins, and that's going to be bad for earnings. Of course, that's, that's been true to a, a minor degree. What really crushes margins is when the top line begins to weaken. We're currently at about a 10% operating profit margin for the S&P 500. Prior to 2019, in any environment, you were never in a double-digit level. And typically, you were in the mid-single-digit level if you go into recession. So if you, the way that I'm looking at it from an earnings standpoint, Timmy, is if you, go, if you look at the earnings yield, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, it's the reverse of the PE. It's the EP. And that way, you can compare it directly with six-month treasuries. You're getting an equivalent six-month treasury yield than you're getting using my $210 estimate, um, which is below the street, but but not you know Armageddon level. It's 210 versus 220 at the street. So with that scenario, there's no reason to take a major major bet. Um, just seeing what your position in Tony right now, it looks like you're sort of in in a bunker. I mean, by Tony Dwyer standards, <laughs> you are. Um, so I'm, you know, just if you're an average person at home, and there are plenty of people out there who invest mainly in indices, do you invest for the next six months in an index, or do you invest in the next six months in a T-bill, which yields more than five percent at this point? We just showed. I think it's the next three months in the T-bill, Mel. This is a levered system, and when it, when it does decide to drop, it's going to do it really quickly. I I don't. I think the debt ceiling debate. I you know, somebody asked me today, what's what's the catalyst? And we're all so full of it. We don't know what the catalyst is. You never know what the catalyst, or you wouldn't have this massive drawdown. It's going to be something that's unexpected in some way. Here, here's what I do know. The bull story is kind of that October was the loan was discounting everything. The NASDAQ AD line, remember all the biggest stocks are in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ AD line made an all-time low yes, on Friday. The volume AD line for the New York Stock Exchange is making a new low. These things don't typically happen when you're coming off of a major bear market low. So, Mel, we're looking for one more push lower, and it's going to be a nasty push. And it, it was you and the team, the last time the yield curve inverted in the end of 2019, you and the team, we had a video on behind me or a picture when I was in studio of the Grim Reaper, and it was the Dwyer Doomsday Clock. It's all about money. You're a perma bull when there's open money and quite a, a, a solid availability of money. And when it's not, like now, you just want to stay on the sidelines.